<sighs> okay, have we got enough room here? Yeah, 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 we, yeah, have, yeah. We, have. we have. We got enough we have. room. Okay, so you, uh, let's move forward actually. Come on, let's move forward. Right, ah, oh, stop throwing snowballs at us. <laughs> oh, man. Right. So you morning, first... everybody. Morning. It Hello. is morning here. We're gonna put this video yes. up in the night, but it's morning here. In and the Claire, snow. Claire's filming this. Uh, from a and distance. From a distance. Uh, that's it all looks good to me. Oh. That's not the words, but oh, you. Oh, is it not? But no. never mind. Don't <laughs> no. Okay, stop. <laughs> Let's try and answer some right. of these questions for people. Cut. Cut. Ow. I, I've taken all my drugs, like I've told you all. Uh, I haven't, and she I'm, hasn't, I and need she, some. she needs some. Uh, I feel a lot better today, so I thought I'd interview my mum and dad for you guys as I said I would. So the first question everyone has is, what was I like as a child? Uh, actually, as a child, before you became a teenager, you were you were really lovely and helpful and liked to play. Um, so yeah, just like every normal kid, really. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. that mum? Yeah. Do you yes, agree? you were. You were very uh, easygoing. Yeah. We played lots of little games, and yeah, it was good. Yeah. It was and good. and when I got older to a teenager, this is all for another story. We've discussed this with my parents. With the teenager story is a very different story. Yeah. It needs to be approached quite carefully because I had a brain injury when I was younger. Uh, I had. Uh, your phone again, Dad! If anyone's watched any other Every vlogs of me, my dad's important. phone goes off all the time. Yes. I'm standing in the snow for a vlog. I will call you back. Bye. Bye. Hang up. <laughs> yeah, go. Anyway, when I was 13, uh, I had anaphylactic shock in the mountains in Bulgaria. Uh, crazy, crazy story. It's better done for another time, so we'll go through my teens and my 20s at another point in time yeah. because I was a bit of a tear away and a bit of a naughty child but there were reasons for it uh, so we want to make sure that's hit sensitively how do you feel about me having cancer uh, <clears throat> it's difficult but we'll get through it as a family yeah we've always got through things and when you were a teenager as you said there were a lot of difficulties then and we got through all those so this is no different really um, we can't do a lot about it it's out of our hands uh, so we keep praying and hoping for the best and uh, dealing with it day by day. Yeah, I think day by day is how it is. Some days are really good, some days are very sad and difficult, and other days you just have to say, it's a good day today, let's enjoy it, because we don't know what tomorrow's going to hold. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We're trying to enjoy it <laughs> yeah. and be together as a family. Uh, so that's what's important to me. and. That's yeah. important to us. Yeah, yeah it's important to, to, to the family. Yeah, they, I, yeah. I should tell everyone, they came and surprised me as well yesterday. <laughs> uh, out of the blue, we were sat in the hospital waiting for a lift back, and it turned out that my mum and dad were waiting at the house for us. So we, that was lovely of them. How do you guys cope with it on a level, knowing that your, your son's going through this uh, mm. process? And it's an awful process as well. Um, I think we fight for the best for you, Dan. Yeah. We uh, want the best outcomes. Uh, we want you to enjoy your life uh, and make the most of every day. And to us, that's really important. So um, as a family, we want to uh, support you and help you to achieve your best while going through this awful situation. And, um, situation. Situation. <laughs> Anyone in Ireland do you know it's situation? It's a bit Irish then. <laughs> yeah, situation. Uh, it's a good yeah. crack. It's yeah, a good, good crack. crack. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. hopefully that's what we're aiming to do and we will always be there to do our best for you. Do you have anything yeah. to add, Dad? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I try and do, which is very difficult for a lot of people, is um, I just try not to overthink things. Like, you know, what happens if and where do we go when this <clears> happens and so on. There's enough to deal with when things do happen. So what's the point of trying to think about things that might happen? There's just enough to, to live with day by day. So uh, don't <clears> overthink <throat> is, is what I try and do. Some people have asked as well, can you try and explain as well how you feel the severity of this type of cancer is? Uh, well, I think having looked at the research that Daniel's looked at and we've looked at it uh, also and in asking questions like Daniel has from abroad and uh, trying to find people that might know something about this has been very difficult. So, um, you know, we've tried to look at it from the point of view we'd like Daniel to have uh, some intervention, yeah. but where from we don't know. 
and we'll just keep fighting this corner um, to try and get that help and support. Um, so we're always uh, challenging situations, challenging doctors, challenging our NHS, challenging is the word really yeah. uh, because we've because found I'm through... a challenging child I'm saying <laughs> I'm a challenging <laughs> mother okay yeah. well. okay right <laughs> another question is have I always been comical and silly and is this just a coping mechanism um, he has always been comical and silly uh, he's probably inherited that from me because tell us uh... a joke <sighs> tell us a joke I'm trying to think of one now. Put him like, on the spot. Oh, that uh, was terrible, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Tell us a joke. I'll tell you what he usually no. says to me <laughs> and to others. A man isn't complete until he's married, then he's no. finished. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Oh dear, we're in And we've been yeah. married 39 years this year. 39 yeah. years? Wow, that's a long time. I know. Uh, so I've forgotten what the question was. Joke, what was the <laughs> joke? <laughs> joke, tell us the joke. I haven't got one in my head at all at the minute. We will refilm so we, this later we will, and we'll find you a we'll joke. We'll find you a joke, yes. We'll find you a joke okay. and we will find yeah. you a joke. We'll get a joke off okay. my dad at some point in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> um, look out for the joke, folks. Look out for the joke, yeah, definitely. But yeah, I, I used to be a kids entertainer. I still do some of that occasionally uh, for charity events and things like that around uh, our area. And Daniel kind of grew up with this dad who was making things appear and disappear and doing nutty stuff. And I think and it's kind of I want to off. interject there. <laughs> same as he made things appear and disappear, I'm going to do exactly the same with the cancer. And we're going to make it disappear. But this time we're going to make it disappear for good. I am definitely going to fight this to the end. Uh, so, yeah, that's important. We are, yeah. we are fighting this as a, as a family, as a yeah. team. We've got good people helping us, and yeah. that is important as well. I, I think if laughter is a coping mechanism and people <clears throat> feel better because they laugh and have fun, even when they're suffering and looking at real difficulties and, and fear of what comes next, then good luck to them. Do it. Don't let anybody say, oh, mm -hmm. what are you laughing and joking for because you're not well? Um, you are coping. Yeah. Whatever you do to cope, that makes you feel better, you cope. Yeah, cool. As long as you don't break the law, of course. Well, I'm not going to break the law know. yet, people. <laughs> not yet. Oh, really? Not yet. There's okay. some stuff in, in the works that might break the law. You get more like you the cat in the hat every day. I am like the cat in the hat quite <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go and buy a cupcake in eight. I'll make it right? look like an accident. The cupcake in eight. <laughs> <coughs> it's awesome. Anyway, yeah, what's the next step for everything that we're doing to try and solve this cancer stuff? Well, I've made a referral uh, with Daniel's permission um, yeah. to a hospital in London, um, <clears> to <throat> a professor <throat> there that we think might be able to uh, help Daniel make sense of what's going on. Um, we have lost faith in the hospital that he's currently being treated by and want to find some answers. Can you so, explain uh, the lost faith part? Lost faith is because they've delayed things, they haven't been correcting things. Daniel knows more than the doctors, which is very um, shameful. And uh, we just want to see that he has the best treatment and the best outcomes. And also to make sense of what he's going through at the moment, because I don't think anybody has given him uh, the ability to make sense of uh, this particular cancer and what it means um, and the same for us as a family so we're just striving to find somebody that will be able to help him do that okay. and uh, also the fact that um, uh, the scans that came back recently um, have shown uh, another growth and that wasn't mentioned to him um, by the hospital. Yeah, numerous growths, it's um, not just the, and, the one, uh, there's numerous growths. How could they leave him like that and he had to find out when he went in as an emergency on Friday from another hospital. So that is, in my opinion, quite disgraceful. Yeah. So uh, we are following that up um, with a formal complaint. Mm -hmm and uh, we will make sure that uh, nobody suffers the way we have and particularly Daniel um, in the future. One thing that I've discovered is that a lot of people who call themselves experts do know a huge amount about their field but actually when you question them they start to fluff, they um, cover up and they're not really sure about what they're talking about particularly if it's a rare form of cancer or something that's not really understood. Um, they're trying to be professional, but actually they're acting like amateurs. And I think what you need to do is to respect their training, understand that um, they are there to help if they can, 
Um, but challenge what they say and ask other people and get opinions and be prepared if you've uh, you've got the uh, the backup if you like to ask the difficult questions that maybe they don't want to answer because sometimes when you ask them a question they can't answer they go away and find that answer and come back with a result that's really going to help you so so do challenge do ask what do you think of me doing the vlog and supporting other people and trying to build this support community for people and to you dad what yeah, do you think well, I, I think it's a really good idea. I, I think I said it before actually that it, as long as this vlog is helping people to um, get the support they need, it's encouraging them not to do stupid things because they're ill um, and it's really um, bringing more information to a very difficult area of life then I think it's a great idea. What do you think about the support community and me building that? support community for people who have come to my YouTube channel yeah. and I've, I've noticed there's a void there and a massive sense of uh, people being scared and worried and yeah. they need support yeah. from other people and I feel that I can't comment back to everything I'm gonna get to a point where I can't yeah. comment back to yeah, everything that's true. but other people can support each other so them going to this support network this yeah. community hub that we're building and everything yeah. what do you think of that I, I think it's a great idea um, a lot of these community hubs and things, though, end up being a whinging forum. And yeah. I think, knowing how you would go about it, that's not what it's for. It's for no, people it's to not. come along and say, look, I might have had a bad experience, but I want a better one. Yeah, if you how want to moan about that? it, don't moan about it. Uh, you yeah. can, well, don't moan about it in a way of being like subjective, be objective. Yeah. Yeah. See if you can find something to help yourself. Or if you've yeah. got a question, ask that question because don't be afraid to ask someone a question. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask me a question. Don't be afraid to ask anyone a question. If you've got a question for my mum or dad, obviously they'll <laughs> probably answer it as well or I'll get yeah. an answer for you. But like, don't be afraid to question anyone on anything because at the end of the day, people have been calling me out, calling me a liar and all this other stuff. What is the point of me lying about this? I've had this for years now. I've been very sick. I've been through the mill, like proper, really under the weather, proper unwell and forgotten, left behind. And I just want to support other people to get better. And that's what I want to do. So can I just add something, Dan? I think in a lot of situations, people feel alone and isolated. Yeah. yeah. And perhaps don't want to talk to family and or friends about it. And everything's anonymous as well, isn't it? Over the internet, yeah. everything's anonymous. So they can't, they don't feel like they're pushing out to someone close and making them upset. So by all means, talk to someone here in this community. You carry on, sorry. I yeah, just I, I, I just think people want an avenue <clears throat> to talk about it with somebody and they find it difficult in their family situations or with friends or are scared to even think they might have cancer. And so to have something like this is important um, because it means it's uh, uh, talking to people that you don't know that perhaps might have been through similar situations or are thinking about those situations now. And uh, as long as it helps people to uh, get a good um, uh, vibe from this, then I think that's important. Mm. I don't want anybody going downhill through this. I want them being lifted up and uh, making the most of what can be a very difficult situation. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's a good place to probably end this because we're all getting cold. Oh yeah, but yes. <laughs> we are getting cold. Claire's got cold feet. Not like uh, like she's going to run away from a wedding or anything. Uh, she <laughs> says hi. She stood over there, but she doesn't want to be on camera still. So maybe one day we'll get her on camera. I know she's got a load of snowballs lined up, and she's going to attempt to throw them at me. I'm guessing in a second. So if, if my she mum does, and dad, I will because I need to go and get. If a my mum and dad want to walk off now, by yeah. all means, yeah, we will. And then Claire can throw Bye. the snowball at me. So yeah, Point us at the see you later, show. guys. Bye. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs>